Bible. We'll read this lesson. It's Isaiah 59 and 15. It says, Yea, truth falleth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself pray. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard, standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgressions in Jacob, saith the Lord, As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My Spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, or out of the mouth of thy seed seed, <coughs> saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Uh, you know, Brother Chris, that's, that's, uh, that's the armor that we have to put on today. Exactly right. That's the armor that we have to keep uh, to protect ourselves from uh, adversaries, uh, verbally, emotionally, and everything else. <coughs> to, uh, we gave it today, here today, in this house. It's a house of refuge. Amen. And it's a house of, uh, that we put a, uh, keep our armor on. We come in here and Brother Richard tells us to put our armor on. Protect ourselves when we get out in the world. And uh, <coughs> it's in a way, it's like isolation, but in a way, it's protection, too. Man. We have to protect our principles. Right. And our principles are going to be worth more to your fellow man mm -hmm. than anything you may say. Amen. Your actions are going to be a lot better than any word that you may say. Yeah. You may say, well, you, you need to come to the Lord. That's good. That's proper. And all that. But something that's even stronger, putting on the armor that God gives you, and walk in and stand out. Right. You've heard the uh, farmer that's outstanding in his field. God wants us to be outstanding in our field. Right. And the way to do that is show actions, not words. Right. We depend on Brother Richard for some words. And he says, get, get busy and get active. The book of Acts tells us to get active. And all through the Bible, there's a common thread. Get active. Don't sit. Do. Right. And uh, I didn't mean to make this a sermon, but I, uh, that's, that's, a, that's something that uh, I think the armor of God, as we go in the world, we have to stand apart. Right. Not that we're better than anybody else. Right. But we are quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, God tells us we're different. Jesus said, Jesus said, uh, you're different. Uh, not that you're crazy or anything, but some people are going to look at you as being crazy. But that's okay. Just <laughs> let it slide, you know. Yeah. Just let things slide. So. Yeah. Bless you, true. I'm sorry, Texas. No, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, there in the in the 15th verse where it starts off in our lesson, it talks about the true fail. Uh, I looked up, Richard does a lot of preaching from a uh, dictionary, so I used that too. But it says the truth of the state of being, uh, the case, sincerity in action, character in utterance. Uh, when our personal truth, like 
Truman was saying, our morality or our character fails, that deplete, it displeases God. Uh, and the way I've come to see it is, you know, the more and more times that we do that, the more t more callous that we become, it, 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 it doesn't uh, bother us anymore. We're not convicted of it anymore. Uh, it says that we'll... Uh, uh, it talks about that uh, departed from evil maketh himself prey. We're making ourselves uh, helpless and unable to resist an attack we'll, uh, because it's become normal. Uh, I've thought about all the different ways that we allow stuff like that in. There, we got TV uh, that we allow stuff in through the through the TV. Uh, maybe it's it's bad words or uh, bad <coughs> jokes or or. Or things that we just sit there and some, and we'll even laugh about it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, that, you know, we'll think that was funny, yeah. and we're sitting there and we're doing that, and we've become callous to it, where it does not affect us anymore. And next thing you know, you go out and you're with your buddy, and then one of them words come out, or you laugh at that dirty joke, or we have a moral standard that our character needs to be Christ-like and Absolutely. not world-like. Amen. Uh, Amen. Says the Lord sees that, and it's and he he's di displeased with that. Yeah. Uh, that's just another thing that we have to ask for forgiveness for, uh, and ask for strength to not keep doing that same thing. Uh, it says uh, what I've got wrote down, and uh, I, I'm trying my best to to just go off of the notes, but I I, I feel like I'm just going to just read it. But uh, I'm sorry I'm reading to you, but this is what the Lord laid on me. It says, The Lord sees this, and it displeases Him that there, that there is no judgment. We, uh, we, we do this, these things, and, and we've become calloused, and it doesn't convict us anymore. Uh, and I felt like this, this lesson was for me because I want that conviction back. I want, I want to be chastised when things go wrong, uh, when I mess up, because... Uh, People outside of this church and outside that are sitting at home today, maybe they're mowing the grass or, or washing their car this morning. Uh, you know, I'm going to be my neighbors. On, I'm the only Bible that they're going to right, see. I'm, going, I'm the only thing that, <coughs> that they think that church may, may be like. Uh, maybe they know. I know good and well, but same as you all, you all know my, uh, some of my failures and and, and things that where I mess up and that I'm not, uh, not very Christ-like. Uh, but I want to give God thanks and give Him praise that He knows 100% of my failures. And that he, He's there to strengthen me through every single one of them. He still likes you, don't He still loves me. He still yeah, sees yeah. every bit of those failures, but He still loves me. Uh, and I wanted everybody in, in, in here this morning to be thinking about what are some of those things that you have in your life that you can that you can put in that category of things that we have allowed in our life that we know that shouldn't be there, yet we allow it, uh, and how you can get rid of them? It's real easy, right here. You can get rid of them because our children are watching us, grandchildren are watching us, people in our family are watching us. They 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 see you as uh, or they see us as yeah we're. Uh, they go to church. They don't miss the service. Uh, or maybe they do. Maybe they just go on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll get them to come over and help us do something Wednesday evening because they normally don't go on Wednesday. You know, they, they, they see those things. They know those things. Um, they know uh, people are watching us to see how, how we'll react to a tragedy or how we'll react to something good. Um, you know, we're all the time being being watched. Uh, we're all the time being watched by by God. Uh, we want to, I want to be found pleasing to God. Uh, if we become calloused uh, to those things, uh, we we can all probably fill up a page with a list of those things that we need to to remove from our life. Uh, uh, the things that no bother no longer bother us and we're no longer convicted by uh, we need to, to search our heart and that's just that's where the breastplate comes in right. uh, 
and the, and that whole uh, body of armor. Um, we have to search our heart, when, and once we find those things that we list, search your heart some more. That's why Paul said that we need to repent and die daily, because uh, we allow things. Uh, whether I know Richard hears a lot on the CB, it's it's stuff that you it's not allowed to be on TV, right? Mm -hmm. It's not allowed. They're not allowed to say it on the radio. But anybody can pick up that mic and talk on the CB and say whatever they want, whatever comes out of their mouth. Uh, it it talks about. Uh, that we have a, a, a intercessor. Uh, in verse 16 it says, He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness is sustained him. Uh, right off the bat, as soon as I read that verse, uh, it, we have an intercessor. Uh, we all know that, that Jesus is an intercessor between us and, and God the Father. And the Lord laid this on me, that, and I've never heard it before, so I knew it was from Him, that we have an intercessor through the Holy Spirit that talks to our soul. The Holy Spirit is the intercessor to our soul to get us to plead with us to make the right decision. You know, we have, we have those two voices on each shoulder, like old Bugs Bunny cartoon. One talking you into right, one talking you into doing, doing wrong. But uh, we have the Holy Spirit uh, to talk to us well, maybe I shouldn't yeah. say that or maybe I shouldn't do that uh, and I thank God for that that uh, just like Jesus is uh, going to be our intercessor to the Father and say no this was mine this is what he's done for you you know and go down through your life we have that Holy Spirit being an intercessor with our soul to try to get us to make the right decisions and and and, and plead with us. And I, I've been in those places, and I'm sure y'all have too, where you're tore up on whether you should do this or do that. And uh, the Holy Spirit, when you pray, you know you you know, but the worldly side of you is fighting. Uh, and but if we just hang on and, and follow through with it and, and we'll get we'll get the right the right uh, answer. Uh, just as Jesus has uh, is an intercessor with the Father, the Holy Spirit is an intercessor with our soul to help guide us. The Holy Spirit has an influence with our decision making. Uh, you know, we we can go the worldly route, or we can listen to the still small voice. That's right. Uh, to take those things that we we look for and that no longer convict us, whether they're right or wrong, we uh, we really need to 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 search them out, to seek them out, to find them. Uh, and if it doesn't bother you, uh, things that that used to. You remember when you first got saved? There was you didn't want any part of, of the world in your life. You didn't want to be around people cussing. Didn't want to be around uh, uh, things that we look at it that are that are wrong in the world. And didn't want to be a part of it. We was on fire for the Lord. Uh, everything everything was beautiful, and it still is, and it can still be that way. But you have got to get the junk out of your life. We and and. Once we get that taken care of and all that stuff out, then then we can just fill it right back up with with God. Uh, it talked in seventeen, verse seventeen, about the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, the breastplate defends the heart, uh, helps us to make good judgment, gives us a good heart, uh, gives us to if we think with our heart over our head, we'll make better decisions. Amen. Uh, Amen. And the, the helmet of salvation that defends the mind against thoughts or actions that, that don't reflect Christ. Uh, best thing that we could do, and like what Richard was saying Wednesday night, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, more important. It's not important on who has this office and government and all that stuff. If we work out our own salvation, 
and it, and it takes more than than uh, just one church building. It, 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 it's as a people as a whole. If we all worked out our own salvation in regards to, to God and were saved, things would be a lot better. But, you know, uh, we need more people to put on the breastplate. Some people have worked out their own salvation and they're happy with the way things are that God's not a part of their life. Uh, because we all, we've all read that some will be turned over to a, a reprobate mind, and that's that's where we're at in this life, in this time, in this history of this world. That's where we're at. Some people we're not going to convince, but we can still show them God's love. Uh, and how do we do that? By putting on the whole armor of God. Uh, Chris, those those calluses turn into reprobation. That's right. Uh, yeah, they sure do. After now, listen, God. After so long, uh, God is like our dads were. Yeah. Uh, af after so long, you know, mom and dad they made me go to church to a certain age, and then they said, "It's your decision." Yeah. Uh, they done their part, and and uh, boy, I tell you, I don't know about the rest of you, and I can see it in me and Zach's relationship. I thought my dad for years had a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, that old fogey, he don't know, and, and folks looks at me like that as, as, a, as, a, as a preacher, as a pastor. I can see it in their actions. I can see, see it in the feedback. I can see it the way they look at me. Uh, I don't care what he says. If I'm in myself, you ain't going to have to answer for that. But if I'm preaching the Word of God, you ain't going to be able to stand there and say, I don't know. I don't, you know, that, that, that's an easy way out. But the older I got, as I was uh, preaching Wednesday night, the older I got, I found out that old fogey uh, had, was right on the money. Mm -hmm. Dad taught me, I told him Wednesday night, Dad taught me at a young age. He said, look a man in the eye. He said, let me tell you something. He said, you don't have to wait forever to figure somebody out. He said, if you're talking to somebody and they can't look you in the eye, he said, you, that, that's a person you don't want to put your trust in. That's a person you don't want to confide in. If they can't look you in the eye while they're talking to you, stay away from them. Yeah. I thought, well, yeah. but you know what? I found that out in my 58 years. Yeah. Boy, did I tell you what? The body, the physical body, will give a lot of evidence. Yeah. It sure will. God made it. Listen to me. God made us, made, and, and, and I'm sorry, Chris, that I, I jumped in here. But anyway, after a while, God, He won't push Himself. He oh. has never pushed Himself. Yeah. Now, He'll instruct us, He'll guide us, but after a while, He'll say, okay. And folks, listen, it's dangerous. Yes. After yes. we're turned over to a reprobate mind, there's no hope. Right. Now, preacher, what are you talking about a reprobate? That's when you no longer have convictions. Listen to me. That's when no longer the Holy Spirit is able to pierce you and to turn you around. You're eternally lost and eternally bound for hell. After we say no to Jesus, after a while, there's a callous goes up and God can't change us. How many of you so many times as Chris was talking, of us. We've all been there. You know, we, we maybe we'll miss one church service. Yeah. Man, it eat at us. Yeah. And then, you know, well, then we miss another. And it ain't as bad. Mm. A callus started growing. Yeah. And after a while, if somebody would say something to us about it, <laughs> it didn't bother you at all. That's a callus. Yeah. Listen, that's something that the Spirit of God cannot penetrate. Oh, yeah. man. Sorry about that. No, oh, man. It's the truth. And you know, preacher, that what's an abomination to God? Yeah. Sometimes we take just uh, nonchalant. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, something that really, uh, in black and white in the Scripture, it's an abomination to God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the same. And, uh, that's what I was saying when we first started. It's the same. And when Amos wrote those prophecies, it was the same right, right is wrong and wrong is right. Yeah. It's the same, same. Uh, and just think if they had 
if 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 Amos, Amos could have went and turned on the TV news, uh, you know, during those times, if, if they, what what was going on then may not have seemed as as dramatic as what's going on now because technology is different. They can do a lot of different stuff uh, today than what they could at that time. But regardless, like I said, that Amos was wrote 2,800 years ago. Sin is sin. It's Amen. all, it, you know, sin is sin in God's eyes, whether it's, Amen. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to go down a list of all of them, but, I mean, we all know what, uh, like Truman said, we have the breastplate, we have the helmet, we have the clothing and the cloak uh, to protect us. Uh, we still have, we still get convicted, but... You know, there's still some things that we've allowed in our life that we're not convicted over anymore. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Because it's just so accustomed to seeing it every day or hearing it every day. And those are the things that, that uh, you know, we need to add to, the, to that list uh, of things to pray about. And, and God, help me through this. Help me cover that with the breastplate. Uh, and, and, and help... Help me personally. If we all ask God to help us each individually, uh, and that not just at people in here, I mean people as a world. If the whole world <laughs> served God, yeah. well, it, we'd be in heaven. Oh, yeah. you know, we, but it's Chris, not like that. I have one, one statement, and I'll be quiet. This, uh, this crazy thing about uh, the world has uh, got me in turmoil because that, uh, you know, when Jesus came, there was a lot that accepted Christ, and there was many more that walked away, and that's here right today, mm -hmm. and you got different walks of life, or rationalizing certain things, but any, any time in the scripture, it's an abomination to God. We should uh, walk uh, three, 180 degrees. Yeah. As, my, as my mom used to say, you need to run from it, son. Right. Don't stand by, but run away from it. Don't run to it. Well, I'll try to quit for you. <laughs> well, we're in the days now yeah. that uh, when he said in the last days, uh, said they would say evil is good, yeah. good is evil. Yeah. And that's the, Come on, that's the time we're living in now. Yeah. And uh, Peggy was telling me our, uh, the other day, Peggy Moore, that they built this big temple of satanic or uh, Satan worshipers. <clears throat> Had a big statue out front with a goat's head on it and everything. And people is turning over and worshiping the devil. And that's so sad. Uh, people so educated but still don't want right. to understand the Word of God. Right. they picking up the wrong books. Yeah. Amen. Bless you, man. A lot of that, there's no fear in it. Amen. They don't fear God. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. no fear. You're There's right. no fear, and then there goes your morals. But it also says in Proverbs, you, when you call good evil, or evil good, it'll never depart from you. Yeah. And you know the devil's, the devil's got evil spirits. Yeah. And those spirits won't leave. Amen. That's a stronghold that gets in, and I think it gets in your families, it gets in everything. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I want to. Uh, it's exactly what I was looking for with uh, because it says in, in in our lesson that we need to raise our standard, uh, put up our shield, and and the standard would be the uh, uh, the support for your shield, uh, and and by discussing it openly, and and we can discuss discuss this lesson in here today. If you speak up and, and have have a question or have a statement or something, you're raising your standard. You're you're uh, 
battling, and you, you, you're putting on your armor because we, it, by discussing things in here, we can discuss it amongst ourselves and find out and seek what God says, and then it prepares us to go outside. Amen. Right? It goes, right. and goes out into the workplace. Uh, I want to I want to thank God that He's He's raising the standard of for the the floods and storms that I've went through in in my life and and uh, uh, the, uh, I've already said that the standard is a is a structure built for serving as a base of support uh, and and that's just like the last time I was up here and had the privilege to to stand here I. I needed some support, and I asked those those kids that I had in class yeah. 10, 15 years ago, uh, and I still look to them. They're they're my support. Uh, uh, Natasha, how old are you? Twenty nine. Huh? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Uh, she was in my class when I when I first started, uh, and and Jeremy and Zach and Whitney and and Jenna. Uh, and Richard, uh, but I mean, uh, I, I look to you guys, what do you know what are you and, and John back there, uh, I look to you guys, uh, you're still here, and that, that just gives me something to praise God about, I, I did something right, because you're still here, uh, but that defines this whole lesson, uh, that God gives a base of support that's unbreakable. Uh, the only way we can weaken our support is by allowing things in our life and we become calloused and things uh, don't really bother us anymore. Uh, you know, those things out in the world, Truman, uh, it could, you know, if we live to see another 20, 30 years, maybe we, they wouldn't bother us no more. It would become normal, you know. Uh, it's, it's time for us to reset our standard. I like what, what Richard preached there a few months ago when he set out when we first get saved our boundaries are right here real close and then something comes in and we move it out we move, move the landmark just move move them all around move them, widen that out uh, but it's time to reset this, those <coughs> our standards we we have values we have things that we see as right and wrong uh, and we need to reset that standard uh, and and search those things out in our life and, and get them out uh, because the lost, in like we've said in in this day and time, they are going to be the only Christ-like thing that they're ever going to see. Because they're not going to pick up the Bible and read it yourself. Those that have been turned over to that reprobate mind. That's right. uh, but I, I and it, through this lesson, I, I I've been praying, Lord. I know if nobody else gets anything out of this, this has just been for me, and I want to I want to feel my convictions. Uh, I want to know myself personally when when I'm letting you down. I want to be chastised. Uh, I just want to turn from uh, allowing those things in my life, reset my standard, and block those things so they. They uh, won't influence my decision making and help me more, be more like him. Right. Uh, and I don't know about you all, but I'm just I'm just thankful that God sent the Holy Spirit as the, for an intercessor with my soul. Uh, I, I want to take all the calluses a, a, away and and not let things be normal to me that are wrong. That's right. Yeah. Uh, really? uh, but that's that's what God gave me on our lesson Bless this morning, Richard. And, and yeah. I praise thank you. Yeah. 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 Everybody stay awake. Uh, but I got up this morning and I was uh, went up to the barn. And uh, y'all probably get tired of hearing about them crazy they got animals, you know, who cares? But you if you ever wanted to just sit and watch yeah. sheep, uh, y'all's welcome to come up here anytime. You'll learn something within ten minutes. Uh, and it went right along with this lesson, Richard. Uh, things that have become normal. Uh, I went up there and I opened the gate. Didn't have to say a word to them because they. I, I set out a bell of hay every morning for them. Uh, 
me or Rebecca one day. Went out there and I said out that hay. And in the wintertime when there's no grass, they run right to that hay and they'll eat it till it's gone. I went out, I opened that, they ran right through that hay into the pasture. They wanted the good stuff. Yeah. And and uh, they went you right don't along, blame them, do you? Right along with the lesson this yeah. morning. Pass up what's normal. Don't let the normal become your good stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Brother Richard. That that hay is a form of cereal.